What's going on pilots? Welcome to the build series of the new Pilot RC 1.8 scale F16 brought to you by Banana Hobby. So what we have here on the table are the parts that's going to be going into this build. So starting with the turbine, what we have here is the ASEX 80. Now this turbine puts out about 18 pounds of thrust. I went ahead and did the bench testing on this turbine this morning, so I will be including that clip in the video. For the power management to the servos, we are going to be the, using the PowerBox uh, Pioneer along with the PowerBox iGyro set. And then for our receivers, we're going to be using dual PBR 26D receivers along with uh, dual receiver packs uh, from AR Powers. There are going to be lithium ion uh, 3200 milliamp packs. And then for the transmitter, we're going to be using my PowerBox core on this jet. So let's go ahead and get started with this build. All right, so we've got fuel valve is open. I've already primed the uh, fuel line here. Uh, we got power to the receiver and the ECU, and it's in stop. So it's basically just waiting for me to um, initiate the start cycle. So let's go ahead and trim all the way up. And now the uh, GSU is showing ready. So we are ready for our first fire up. Here we go. All right, there you have it, guys. So uh, first startup on the uh, ASEX 80. Um, we, did, we did have to change a little bit of the parameters. Uh, the acceleration and the uh, deceleration parameters were uh, a bit too, too, way too slow, honestly. Uh, acceleration took about almost 12 and a half seconds and the deceleration uh, was roughly about the same. So. I had to adjust some of those parameters to get it close to about a four second um, thrust output from idle to maximum thrust and about the same equal um, deceleration time from full throttle to idle. So I'm satisfied with the settings now. Um, I think we're ready to install this turbine, or turbine in the uh, Pilot RC 1.8 scale F16. So. I'll see you guys on the workbench. Okay, so here is the engine hatch cover on the F16. So you've got four of these latches 
that basically you pull back and then a uh, little L shape um, latches so that they lock in place so you can pull all four of them out. Now here is the uh, engine bay for the F-16. I did remove the thrust tube out just so that I can do a little bit of um, heat insulation on some of the formers and then also you can kind of see it uh, way back right there is the uh, one of the servos for the uh, elevator. Um, I wanted to kind of put some heat insulation uh, around that area along with some heat insulation for the uh, servo leads just only because they're you know that that close to the uh, thrust tube and um, pretty much exposed to heat so I want to minimize the amount of uh, issues that we're gonna have with the heat um, and causing some failures on the servos back here so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that and then I'll see you guys in a little bit all right so what we got here are some uh, BVM heat shield plus uh, all you need to do is really just take a, an applicator such as a brush right here that I got from Harbor Freight and you get like I don't know 50 of these in a bag and they're only like two dollars so all we need to do is just put two light coats of this around the former here and I probably might put some here also um, but primarily I wanted to kind of put some heat insulation around this former and then also on the back end where the exhaust tube is so let's go ahead and start applying some of this product on the wood former now you want to just kind of apply just a light coat at first and then give it about 10 to 15 minutes to dry up and then put your second coat and that should be enough just to kind of protect this wood uh, former here so you just kind of brush it on All right, so we got our second coat of the BBM Heat Shield Plus on that wood former. It's just currently uh, still wet. It's drying up right now. Um, and then I want to show you guys where the elevator servo is back there. And then there's two servo leads that go um, on the right side of the jet. So one for the elevator and the other one comes out from the top for the uh, rudder right there. Uh, so those exposed servo wires, I'm going to sleeve those wires using those heat uh, protecting sleeves and then uh, probably put a, a, a tape of that um, aluminum uh, heat, heat shield tape also back there just so we can insulate the uh, electronics a little bit from the heat coming out of that uh, the turbine so we're gonna go and move on to that step uh, and I'll see you guys in a little bit All right, now that the uh, BVM Heat Shield Plus is all dry, I'm ready to move on to the next step. So, but in, in the meantime, I wanted to show you guys what I've been working with. So originally the uh, elevator servo was zip tied uh, pretty much right here along the uh, uh, turbine mount. And I just felt like that was way too close for the turbine uh, ex exhaust nozzle. So I moved it a little further outboard. You can see it there. And I put some aluminum heat shield tape over it. And I've also insulated the elevator wires so that um, it's just kind of protected from the heat. And then way back there, you can see a little bit of the heat um, aluminum shield tape also to protect the um, servo lead to the rudder. And then on the rudder uh, servo lead, uh, I installed the uh, Pilot RC flush mounted servo connector that just pretty much looks like this little thing right here. Get the camera to focus. Here we go. Now you get a pack of these from Pilot RC, and I actually have a pack sitting right there uh, on the table. You get a pack of those with the hardware um, included. And it just makes it look a lot cleaner um, set up rather than seeing a servo lead flapping around just like uh, the aileron servo is there. So I'm going to do the same thing to that connector also to just kind of make the jet look a lot cleaner when I'm done. So that's where we're at right now with this build. And then if you guys notice, the uh, thrust tube has been removed. Um, I already did that. 
not just because I wanted to do the heat insulation to the uh, wood formers, but also I'll show you guys how I measure my distance from the exhaust nozzle from the turbine to, or the turbine to the uh, bell mount. So we'll do that next. All right guys, so what we got on the table is our thrust tube from the F-16, our turbine, and the adjustable square that I have here. Uh, this square I got from Harbor Freight. I think it was like less than $10 for this thing. What I really like about it is it also has a level built in. Um, so what I use this, this thing for is measuring the distance from the beginning of the bell mount to the beginning of the thrust tube. And what I simply do is put this up against the face of the bell mount and just measure to see where the beginning of the thrust tube is. So I've already did this ahead of time. Uh, I got a measurement of two and a quarter inches and our target goal for the distance from the exhaust cone to the thrust tube is an inch and a half. So basically all I'm gonna do is subtract an inch and a half from two and a quarter inches, which gives us roughly about three quarters of an inch. All right, so now that I got three quarters of an inch there, I'm simply going to put this right up against the exhaust cone and then I'll mark to see where that ends up being. And then when we install the turbine in the jet with the thrust tube, I basically just line up, <laughs> can you guys see it? Basically just line up where the beginning or the face of that bell mount is to the lines that we're gonna be putting on this uh, exhaust cone. So let's go ahead and do that measurements and then mark the exhaust cone and install it in the F-16. All right, so now that we've got our um, thrust tube installed back in the jet, we're simply going to place our turbine right on the turbine rail and we're just gonna position the turbine to where it lines up with the face of the bell mount. So right now it's not perfect, but I just wanted to give you guys a, an idea of how my process is when I am installing the turbine and basically judging the, or measuring the distance from the beginning of the exhaust cone to the beginning of the thrust tube. So then once I'm satisfied with the position, I'm gonna be looking down the exhaust end of the jet to make sure that I am lined up uh, perfectly straight in the thrust tube I'm not, you know, crooked to the left or to the right um, and just making sure that that thrust angle on that turbine is perfectly straight down the runway. So we're going to go ahead and do that and then mark where our holes are going to be drilled out and then bolt this turbine down. All right, guys, so we pretty much got the ASEX 80 bolted down on the turbine rail and if you look directly above the jet, we are still perfectly lined up with the front face of the bell mount. So now let's take a look at the exhaust tube and double check to make sure we are perfectly centered down the tube. I know it's a little tricky, but yeah, we are pretty dead center in the thrust tube. So I'm satisfied with that installation. Let's go ahead and move on to the fuel plumbing. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is remove that fuel tank and just double check, inspect all the plumbing and then, um, you know, clean the inside of that tank. So we're, we're going to go and uh, get started on that. All right, guys. So what we have here is the fuel tank for the F-16. So what I'm going to do here is just basically inspect the fuel fittings to make sure that they were installed properly at the uh, factory. And then I'm also going to clean the inside of this fuel tank with some denatured alcohol uh, just to clear out or flush out any debris that may have been uh, uh, still inside the, uh, the tank during the manufacturing process. So I went ahead and already unloosened the bolt um, that holds this pressure fitting in place. I'm going to pull the fuel plumbing out and as I suspected and this is the reason why I removed these things and inspect it 
uh, the factory just used zip ties to hold the fuel lines in place. Uh, that's not good enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut these uh, zip ties out and I'm actually just going to go ahead and do it properly this time with uh, double wrap safety wire. Um, and you want to make sure you do that um, because the last thing you need is after all that time you spent building these jets only to have your fuel fittings uh, fail on you and cause issues or you in the long run potentially shutting down the, uh, the turbine because it is starving of fuel while you're flying. So we're going to go ahead and get started with that process and then I'll show you guys when it's done. Alright, so here it is, the completed um, reassembly of the fuel line um, fitting. So if you guys can see closely, I don't know if the camera is going to focus on it, but we now have safety wires installed. So that is a lot more reliable than using zip ties. So now I'm satisfied with this setup so we can actually go ahead and install this thing back in the fuel tank. So the fuel tank has already been cleaned out and dried. So this is ready for reinstallation back into the jet. And there it is. All right guys, so currently we've got the uh, printer going here. Um, what it's printing right now is the mount for the Festo on and off ball valve that we're going to install in the F-16. So once this is done uh, printing, we'll get the uh, plumbing completed on this F-16 build. So I'll see you guys in a little bit, alright? Alright, so we finally got our 3D printed ball valve mount completed and it is now going to be installed on the uh, F-16. So basically the base plate that was 3D printed, once it's done, uh, we just snapped it, the uh, ball valve in place and uh, we're gonna find a location to install this on and off valve in the uh, plumbing. And then if you guys are wondering uh, where the fuel pump is installed, so currently with the, uh, the factory UAT, um, already removed the screws so I can show you guys I decided to mount the fuel pump directly below it so under that is the uh, the mount for the landing gear and we have at least like an inch of clearance maybe um, between the bottom of, of the UAT and the top of the fuel tank so plenty of room to install the uh, the small fuel pump for the uh, ASEX 80 in there so what's gonna happen is with the, fuel, the uh, UAT installed. From the UAT, we're gonna have a six millimeter fuel line that's gonna route down into the fuel pump, right direct, directly right below it. And it's gonna connect to this nipple. And then on the output side, going to the turbine, it's gonna be a four millimeter that's gonna come back up into our on and off valve and then directly to the turbine that is installed aft of the aircraft. So I think this may be a good position or maybe a little, even a little further aft to install the on and off valve. Um, I think I might, I might actually move it a little further back somewhere around that position. So when the four millimeter uh, fuel line comes back up, it'll, I could probably even route it up here and then directly to the back of the, the jet. So uh, I'm gonna go, go ahead and get started on that part of the plumbing. And then that should be it for the plumbing of the F-16. And then we can move on to the electronics. So I'll see you guys once that is complete. All right, guys. So we are officially done with the fuel plumbing on the F-16. There you can see the UAT. And uh, directly below it is the fuel pump. Off to its left is our uh, ball valve on and off. And then the main fuel line leading to... The fuel tank bearing clear and then our uh, vent line and then right there off to the left is our fuel filter now to the back of the aircraft we've got our ASEX AV installed and pretty much plumbed up so we are now complete with the uh, fuel plumbing 
we can go ahead and get started on the electrical. So I'll see you guys on the next video and uh, we'll see how it turns out when we're done.